Hey everyone, Mr. Fransky here. Um, taking a look at a Chapter 7 review problem here on motion. Uh, we've got our Chapter 7 topics list right here. Uh, so this is kind of focusing on the first two here is uh, from 7.1, the rate in, rate out problems, um, and motion, just displacement and final position. So we have this whole idea of if you use an integral, it tells you how much like one level down changes. So if we think about motion, and we have our position, our velocity, and our acceleration. Generally, they give you a velocity function, and they ask about position. So to do that, we have to somehow integrate, and um, we have to use our initial position because the integral only tells us how much it changes. So let's take a look at this problem. All right, so we've got a particle moving along the x-axis, so it's moving back and forth. Uh, so its velocity at time t is given by a differentiable function v, uh, whose graph is shown above. Here we are. So the velocity is 0, t equals 0. Looks like that's pretty clear. Uh, t equals 3, and t equals 5. All right. And the graph has horizontal tangents at 1. So at 1 right there. And at 4. All right. I'd buy that. The areas of the regions bounded by the t-axis and the graph of v on the intervals 0, 3, 3, 5, and 5, 6 are 8, 3, and 2. Okay, so we have the areas there, they're given to us, we don't actually have to integrate them. And this makes sense because they say no calculators allowed, so they're giving us the areas, and we're going to use those. At time t equals 0, the, part is at, the particle is at negative 2, so it starts at negative 2 right here. And then it looks like it starts off by moving backwards, so it moves left for a while, all the way until 3, and then it starts moving right, and then it moves left again at the very end. Okay, so let's see what they ask us. So first, for 0 less than t, less than 6, find both the time and position of the particle when the particle is furthest to the left. Okay, so uh, furthest left, that sounds like an optimization problem. So if you remember from uh, back when we did optimization, um, we have to check uh, critical points and endpoints. So critical points and endpoints have to be checked. Now, AP usually allows you uh, a little bit of liberty in this um, because really all you have to check is critical points when it could have a minimum, right? Because like five, five velocity changes positive to negative, so that would be a potential maximum. That's not going to be a furthest left point, so we won't have to consider it. But we should consider zero. Uh, looks like three. Three is a change from a negative to a positive value. Um, five, I'm just going to do them all, why not, and six. So we're going to do all the critical points and the endpoints. So if we think about this, we have t, and then I'm going to have x of t. So 0, 3, 5, and 6. These are all values that could work. So the position at 0, they tell us, is negative 2. The position at 3, to be able to find that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the position at 0, and I'm going to add to it the integral from 0 to 3 of v of t dt. So that would take the position at 0, and then the, the antiderivative of v is going to tell me how much that position function changes, right? Because we have our tower here. So if we integrate v, it's going to tell me how much the position changes. And then for 5, we can do uh, x of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 5. Oops. Go away. So 0 to 5 v of t dt. And then for 6, we can do x of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 6 v of t dt. Now we'll be getting these values along as we go, so you could really do x of 6 like to be x of 5, because we're going to find x of 5. You can do x of 5 plus the integral from 5 to 6. I'm just going to do them all the way all from 0, which is just fine. So we've got the initial position is negative 2. So the next one uh, for 3, so the position at 3 is going to be negative 2. And then the question is, how much does it move between 0 and 3? Well, they tell us that, right? They give us the area here. They're 8, 3, and 2. This is 8, this is 3, and this is 2, right? And technically, the 8 is negative, right? Because it's below the graph, and the 2 is also negative. So um, it's going to be negative 2 minus 8, which is negative 10. At 5, so we are at negative 10, and now it's moving to the right. So we're going to move right 3 between 3 and 5. So it's going to be, I guess the way that I wrote it, I should write it, negative 2 minus 8 and then plus 3. So it looks like that's going to end up being at negative 7. Okay, and then at 6, we're at negative 7, and we move another negative 2, so that's going to be negative 9. So for the way that I wrote it is negative 2, and then if we integrate from 0 to 6, it'd be minus 8 plus 3 minus 2, which is going to be negative 9 overall. So it looks like we are, if, because of the candidate test, we, we checked all the critical points and endpoints. Those are the only places that it could be furthest left. It looks like it is furthest left at t equals 3. And x of 3 is equal to negative 10. 
Okay, so now let's check the answer and see if we did it right. <clears throat> so they say, uh, they do a change here. So they show that um, velocity is negative between zero and three and uh, five to six, and it's positive between three and five. So we can see that, right? Five to six and zero to three, it's negative. It's positive between three and five. So they say um, the only place you have to consider are three and six. So it's okay if you didn't actually consider five and zero because it starts off by going negative. So it's moving left initially. So we don't really have to consider zero or five, but they're so easy to check, we might as well, okay? And then they just do the equations that we just did, right? So x of three, so negative two plus the integral from zero to three, x of six, negative two plus the integral from zero to six. So the furthest left is going to be at t equals three and the x value is negative 10. Check out the points over here. So three has to be identified and six also has to be identified. Those are the two things that you have to take a look at. And then the conclusion, which is that it happens at t equals three. So one point for all three of those. Cool, let's check out the next part. For how many values of t, where zero is less than or equal to t, less than or equal to six, is the particle at x equals negative eight? Okay, well, we know that it starts at, so I'm gonna make my, uh, my chart again here. We already made it on the last slide, but I'll just make it again, so we've got it here. Sorry, t and x is what I want. So we said that at zero, it was at negative two. We said that at three, it was at negative 10. At five, it was at uh, negative, what was it, seven? And then at six, it was at negative nine. So because we have a smooth function in V, V is differentiable, right? It's differentiable all the way through. I think they tell us that in the initial problem. Um, and it's continuous. Uh, that means that we have to follow the intermediate value theorem. Okay, so by IVT, since the motion is continuous, it's important it's continuous to do, do uh, intermediate value theorem. So intermediate value theorem, since motion is continuous, uh, we have to cover all the x values between negative two and 10 between zero and three. We have to cover all the x values between negative 10 and negative seven between three and five and negative seven and negative nine between five and six. We're looking for x equals negative eight. Well, that's gonna have to happen between zero and three. So x equals negative eight between zero and three. And then again, between three and five, because we go from negative 10 to negative seven. So between three and five, and also between five and six. Okay, so it looks like three times, so at least three times. Uh, so, and in fact, three times, that's it, right? So three times. Okay, let's see how they said it. They probably said it a little more eloquently than I did. So the particle moves continuously and monotonically, okay? So monotonically means that um, like it's only moving left between zero and three, then it's only moving right between three and five and only moving left between five and six. Similarly, the particle moves continuously from th uh, three to five. So we got zero to three, three to five, and five to six. So by the intermediate value theorem, there are three values of t for where the particle is equal to negative eight. Because we go negative two to negative 10, it must be in between there. Negative 10 and negative seven must be in between there. And then negative seven to negative nine gotta be in between there again. So three, five, and six, you get one point for that. You get one point for saying that the motion is continuous. And then you get one point for the conclusion, which is the intermediate value theorem and saying that it happens three times. Awesome. All right, next up. <clears throat> so between two and three is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing? Here's two, here is three. So remember speed, speed is increasing when uh, A of T and V of T have the same sign. And it is decreasing when A of T and V of T have different sign. Let's check it out. Looks like V is negative, so V of T is less than zero. And the acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity, so that's the slope here. Slope is positive. So it looks like they're different signs. So V of T and A of T have different sign. So speed is decreasing. Remember our trick for this one? the velocity graph is getting closer to zero, right? If our speed is approach, if our velocity is approaching zero, we must be slowing down. So it's slowing down in the negative direction is basically what's happening here. Let's see how they said it. So speed is decreasing since on this interval, v, of zero, v is less than zero and V is increasing. There you go. 
All right, and last part of this problem, so doing what intervals, uh, what time intervals, if any, is the acceleration of the particle negative? So acceleration, remember, is just the derivative of velocity. So what I'm looking for here is just whenever we have negative slopes. So whenever v prime of t is less than 0, which is happening when v is decreasing. Okay, so when is V decreasing? Well, they tell us that there are horizontal tangents at 1 and at 4. So it looks like that is happening. Uh, so A of T is less than 0 on 0, 1 and on 4, 6. Okay, so 0, 1 and 4, 6. That's what we're looking for. Let's see how they said it. Acceleration is negative 0 to 1 and 4 to 6 since velocity is decreasing on these intervals. There you go. Answer and justification, 1 point each. I believe that is it. Yep, so hopefully this was helpful. Uh, it took us, what, 10 minutes? So you're expected to be able to do these problems in about 15, and we analyzed them and looked at the solutions at the same time. So not too bad. Hopefully you were able to figure these out. Love you guys. That's why I'm here. Have a great day.